Man, I guess some people just don't ever learn from Gus Van Sant. Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie rant. And this movie rant is going to be for one of the worst remakes in cinema. And that's of course 2010's Nightmare on Elm Street, aka the final Elm Street movie review in this series. Sadly, this would be the last one. Shame. But yeah. A remake made without Wes Craven's knowledge or involvement. Anyway, let's get on with the plot. Well, the plot of this movie, like the original, teenagers Nancy, Quentin, Chris, Jesse, and Dean, yeah, they've changed pretty much almost all their names, are all neighborhood friends who begin having the same dream of a horribly disfigured man who wears a tattered red and green striped sweater and an old fedora and a glove with knives for fingers. The man Freddy Krueger, who is now played by Jackie Earl Haley, and not Robert England, terrorizes them in their dreams, and the only escape is to wake up. But when one of their num numbers dies violently, the friends realize that what happens in the dream world is real, and the only way to stay alive is to stay awake. So how was this movie made? Well, in 2008, Michael Bay and his Platinum Dunes production company began the process had already touched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Amityville Horror, The Hitcher, and recently Friday the 13th, and their next victim of their little money-making scheme would be to give a reboot to A Nightmare on Elm Street and remake the original 1984 movie. Producer Brad Fuller explained that they would follow the same tactics from their Friday the 13th remake and would abandon the things that made the series less scary. The films like Tangus Freddy Krueger would not be cracking jokes and be which had become a staple of his character, and the focus was to make a horrifying movie. Fuller stated that the film is, is a remake of a 1984 film, but clarifies that they would borrow character deaths and dream sequences from the entire series. Mm. In February 2009, a dude named Samuel Bayer was hired to direct, and he only directed fucking music videos. According to New Line production chief Toby Emmerich, Michael Bay advocated heavily for Bayer because he had the ability to capture the kind of seductive and unsettling imagery that would make Nightmare feel like a fresh, visually arresting movie-going experience. And Bayer declined Platinum Digit's offer twice, but finally accepted after Bay emailed him and explained the kind of business opportunity it would be. And in a June 2009 interview, Craven, director of the original movie, was not consulted for the remake and expressed some anger for the film. In contrast, Robert Englund felt it was time for Nightmare on Street to be remade. England liked the idea of being able to exploit the dreamscape with computer-generated imagery and other technologies that didn't exist when Craven made the original 1984. And Bayer believes that the film paid homage to what Craven did in 1984, but did not replicate it entirely. And Bayer recognized that Craven attempted to put more meaning into his films and that the character of Freddy had affected the lives of a generation of people. For Bayer, remaking A Nightmare on Street was about bringing the feeling 
to a new generation with a new spin on the character and story. So after the movie was finished and completed, the 2010 remake would go on to be released on April 30th, 2010 in theaters. And what did fans and critics think of it? They both hated the fuck out of it. They criticized the writing, the acting, the lack of deaf and empathetic characters unlike the original movie had. But there were a few rare tiny ones that I guess somewhat praised Bear's direction. And apparently they thought it had some faithfulness in the 1984 film, which it does not. Despite this, the movie grossed over $63 million at the domestic box office. Predictable. And over $170 million worldwide at the box office. Also predictable for this era. And it became the highest grossing film in the franchise. As for me personally, this would easily be the worst Elm Street movie ever made. I mean, Freddy's Dead was bad, but wow. I don't know how they make they could make a movie worse than that one, but th like th this movie accomplished that so much. 2010's Nightmare on Elm Street was a, just a 99% complete waste of film. I'll give it that 1% for maybe one jump of Dozen's plan, but failed. And a lot of great laughs. And no, I'm not referring to Freddy's sense of humor, because Freddy does not have a sense of humor in this movie. Where to begin? Well, at the beginning, like, such, um, let's change the whole premise on why Freddy's stalking kids in their dreams. Let's change the house. Let's change Freddy's voice and look. Uh, for, uh, let's, let's keep the first thing as Nancy and change her last. Why? Uh, uh, never mind. Let's get back to the review. Let's change the fact that the, that the original throughout the series, the idea was to show heroin with some depth. There's more, but I'll get to that stuff in a bit. Okay, fine. Like, they wanted a newer version of the 26-year-old story, but did we really need that? No. Could they have done a fantastic job? Ah, uh, yeah. I <laughs> could have done a way better job than this. They made the same mistake. Like, this is pretty much about, like, same mistakes with 1998's Godzilla. Like, if you combine the budget of both series' original features, you could probably just pay... For the posters of the updates, and still the remix couldn't come within 3,000 miles of the town of their processors. And some of the effects and their take on the original movies the series also suck too. Like, for example, like, okay, uh, we got the infamous, this is God, death scene. Okay, we'll make that crap. Uh, let, let's rip off Freddy's hand coming, let's rip off the Freddy's hand coming out of the bathtub between Nancy's leg, between Nancy's legs, and um, also look like shit. Okay, well, let's, let's rip off the body in the bag scene in Nancy's dream in school. Okay, and finally, we're going we're gonna to rip off the Freddy coming out of the wall shot, and the effects look like complete ass. Even 1984's effects were better than this. Even if you could turn a blind eye to the awful CGI and cardboard characters, the fact that Robert Englund has passed the baton to Jackie or Haley makes this an utterly joyless experience. Like, no offense to Haley, he's... He's a, he was a fine actor. He was like better. I liked him better in Watchmen, but but recasting England is just wrong. Robert England is Freddy. He's not just some silent killer in the name of Jason Voorhees or Leatherface or Michael Myers. Like you can always recast, and it wouldn't make a difference who's playing who because those guys don't speak. So you can recast just about anybody for those characters. I mean, like it makes sense to recast them every once in a while. Freddy is a character, a personality. A face, and as far as I'm concerned, England is the only person on the face of the earth who can do this role. Anyone else just doesn't sound right. In fairness, like, as soon as we start the movie, we're given plenty of warning. Like for many, the phrase, a Michael Bay production, denotes the exact opposite of a steel of a steel of quality. By being the accountant, being a rash of duff. Deeply unwanted horror reruns that made so much money around this era this movie came out, like including Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Amityville Horror, The Hitcher, and Friday the 13th. Well, Chainsaw, Amityville, and Friday the 13th I decently enjoyed. The Hitcher I freaking did not. Not to mention his own duff self-directed efforts like Pearl Harbor, The Island, and let's not forget the five Transformers movies, with the exception of one. It's just the first one. And the two Ninja Turtles films. He did that shrieking gun and woof and shat all over. From a producer who must have a personal account at home base owning to all those all those sinks of hell, he keeps flitting away. 
And for Bay, a film isn't quite right unless all character, subtlety, and nuisance has been hacked out, and an eyes left with partial deafness. Like, he's just the wrong guy to entrust with horror movies, in which insinuation suggests and secondly slow build up rules the hour. Bay is like. I think, like, apparently Bay was going to remake Hitchcock's The Birds in 2013. Which, um, thankfully did not happen, and we're, and I think we're gonna get to why in a little bit, that why no more remakes from Bay ever happened after this. And message to the idiot director that was Samuel Bear, take notes, having your film prepared with entirely predictable cheap-ass jump scares every 15 minutes or so, doesn't make her film scary. It makes it predictable and annoying. It's even sanitized in tone too, like, in regards to Kruger's crimes and completely forgettable. The only halfway positive things I could... Like, seriously. It's like, Freddy, Freddy's face even looks like crap. Like, it just looks like melt a melted cheese confused with a Ninja Turtle reject. Six. It just looks horribly CGI'd. Freddy's voice even sucks. Two. It's like, they tried breaking him, making him scary again, I get that, but his voice just sounds like garbage, and like, apparently they even made him a pedophile in this remake, in this remake, which was really not needed, because like, yeah, like, in this one, they give him a pointless origin, like, they further show his origin in this movie. The original never even showed his origin at all, but... This remake apparently felt the need to show that. Like, really? Really need to see that on screen? <sighs> the only halfway positive things I can say about it is that it does have, like, Clancy Brown and the dream sequences achieve some sort of atmosphere, which is then promptly ruined by Haley's cartoon-voiced Kruger appearing for any fan of the original that just facepalm. As they're sure they'll be doing... As they're sure anyone would be doing if they watched this movie. Also, you know how there's many people who hate horror remakes that came out around this era of horror? But there were some fans that would rush and try to defend them and make their opinions look bad and think they were masterpieces, like, for example, the Rob Zombie Hill Billy White Trash Halloween movies. Alright guys, some people hated those. Some horror fans consider them masterpieces. Not here. Everyone who loves horror remakes are just the originals. And I mean everyone hates this movie. Almost nobody defends this movie, and both sides agree with each other that this remake really sucks. Like, one, one redeeming quality I can think of is that the failure of this film would finally kill off Michael Bay's horror, re horror movie remake trend for good. And that's why we never, thankfully, did not get a remake of The Birds. Like, despite this film being a box office success, its hate with critics and audiences destroyed any chances of Michael Bay remaking another slasher movie again. And I don't think we ever saw any more slasher remakes for a while until 2019. I mean, there were still some rare horror remakes, but they did not get wide releases. Like, this film just destroyed that trend for good, and thank God it did. Other than that, that's about it as some remakes made by other... Yeah, like, until, like, 2019, there were no other remakes after this. And uh, what's, but what's also sad... We never saw another Nine Round Street movie after this, and it's because of this movie. Like, this movie just proves you should never, ever recast Freddy Krueger. Like, only one person can play him, and that's Robert Englund. As this is gonna sound weird, but I kind of want one more Nine Round Street movie where Robert Englund plays the role one last time. Or something. Like, we should have got a Freddy vs. Jason sequel. We could have had Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash being adopted to the big screen. Instead of remaking both franchises, we should have got a sequel to that. Instead of making a sequel to Alien vs. Predator. Nope, we needed to... Nope, let's remake the franchises. 
Friday the 13th at least proved to be decent. This movie did not. So guys, if you want to have your love for the original movie ruined by this piece of shit cash grab that nobody asked for, please do not watch this badly acted film. Just go and watch the original four Elm Street movies, New Nightmare, and Freddy vs. Jason, because that's all you need to watch for this franchise. Also, there are like, there's way better slash remakes out there and are just better to watch for you instead. Like, just go watch the Texas Chainsaw remake or the Friday the 13th remake. Remakes that are actually decent and actually try to be good. Unlike this. Anyway, that's it for my rant on the 2010 remake. And here's how I'm going to rank on Nightmare on Street 2010. I'm going to give Nightmare on Street 2010 a 0 out of 10. There we go. That's it for my review of the 2010 remake. And with that, we are done talking about Nightmare on Street movies. I don't know what a series I'm going to review next, but... Until then, we'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah. Other than that, Nightmare on Street is officially done. Now we've covered all the movies. And until then... That'll be it for this review. Thank y'all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, then don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.